Hi everybody, Brian Norcross here with a Friday afternoon update on what now the National Hurricane Center is calling potential tropical cyclone four. A potential tropical cyclone is just a potential tropical threat. It's just a disturbance, but now there are watches and warnings issued for Florida. And so that's the official designation from the National Hurricane Center. So we call it PTC4. There's the 5 p.m. advisory, still estimating 30 mile an hour winds in these thunderstorm clusters around the uh, nominal center there you see. Moving to the north, uh, west northwest at 16 miles an hour, so right up the spine of Cuba more or less more or less, and I'll show you more in a second. And there's the estimated pressure at 1,012 millibars. Now, there's been talk uh, on the internet uh, today about is that really where the center is? Maybe the center is farther south down here. But I checked the uh, pressures and or the 1012 pressures are all over the place from Cuba all the way down to Jamaica. So there's just general area of low pressure here. And where the center is isn't really very important. We don't really care because the weather is not associated with the center, as you can see in, in this kind of situation. It's in these thunderstorm clusters. And exactly where it's going to emerge from Cuba when it does tomorrow, that's the the bigger question. So it's heading in this direction. The whole thing is heading in that general direction, and that's really what counts. Now, on the wider view, we can see here late this afternoon this advancing line of storms here that's related to this general broad circulation. So look at the size of that, and then look at the size of the state of Florida. So you see that this is going to take a long time to clear, and we have flood watches in effect for uh, up to eight inches or more of rain over parts of Florida uh, because uh, if, if a line of storms continues over the same place, it's a lot of moisture heading in the direction of the state. Now, that uh, outer band you see right there from the Miami radar here uh, late this Friday afternoon, there you see it with all that lightning in there. The heavy rain that we had today move across the Miami-Fort Lauderdale area, now advancing into the Fort Myers uh, and maybe moving through the Naples area. That's not related to this system. That's related to the strong winds, really to the high pressure north of the system that's been driving the system or is driving it now to the west northwest. So there's kind of a separate thing. But by tomorrow, the circulation of the tropical system is going to be impacting the state of Florida. Now, in terms of tracking just the center now, this is not the whole system. Obviously, as you saw just a moment ago, the weather from the system is much bigger than just the center. But just talking about where the center is going to be, the idea is when you see an AM here, you're uh, talking overnight tonight. So in the overnight hours, it's still over Cuba. Then by the afternoon hours, it's emerging into the Straits of Florida or the southern Gulf of Mexico. And the thinking is that by that time, it will be a tropical depression with 35 mile an hour winds because it's got decent organization now. The question is, can the organization even improve by the time it gets to the Straits of Florida? And then it's uh, quickly a depression, and then after that, quickly a storm, or is it going to take some time to do that? We, do, we don't know the answer to that, but we're going to be ready for these wind speeds to be even a little higher if the organization, let's say that the center really does come out down here and it has time over this very warm water to organize some and then go over Cuba, it may be more organized and may get the 40 mile an hour winds it needs to be Tropical Storm Debbie before it actually gets to... Uh, all the way up here, a beam of Fort Myers. So on the, on the exact forecast, it's a tropical depression near Key West uh, in the afternoon hours tomorrow, and then overnight tomorrow night, it becomes a tropical storm somewhere near Fort Myers or off of southwest Florida. But we're going to be ready for all that to happen a little bit more quickly. But because is forecast to be a tropical storm in the vicinity of southwest Florida. Uh, the tropical storm warnings are in effect for that area. We'll detail that more in a second. And then the, the questions become bigger as you go forward in time, because if the storm stays offshore here, it's going to be stronger than the 50 mile per hour uh, tropical storm that's forecast near the Tampa Bay area. If 
it, it were to take a, a track like this, then it might uh, be actually start to weaken because more of the circulation is over land in here. So we got to be ready for it uh, to be weaker than 50 and, and stronger than 50 miles per hour in the vicinity of the Tampa Bay area. And with it arcing in like this, that is going to put the winds blowing like this. And uh, depending on exactly where the strongest winds are in the geometry of the system, remember, this is a pretty big system. That means it's going to create more storm surge. And that has the potential to drive storm surge into Tampa Bay. So everyone in the Tampa Bay metropolitan area, in fact, everyone along the west coast of Florida, all the way from the Fort Myers area to north of Tampa Bay, got to be ready for that. And I'll show you what the National Hurricane Center is initially forecasting here in just a second. So if the storm comes up in here and then, and then takes longer over the Gulf, Hurricane Center says, okay, 65 mile an hour tropical storm uh, about the time it makes landfall, uh, if it goes right down the middle of the cone north of the Tampa Bay area. But no guarantee is exactly because the rule is that any time a system has not developed or is just developing or is moving slowly, we say the forecasts have more error than normal than we're used to. So expect changes in this uh, as the system develops uh, during the day tomorrow. And then it gets even into more never never land here because the, the system is forecast to slow down significantly. Look at this. This is afternoon on Monday, afternoon on Tuesday, afternoon on Wednesday, somewhere in there. So you've got Monday, Tuesday and Wednesday in this general area and just lots and lots of possibilities of possibly stalling and turning and looping or many possibilities here, or maybe zooming on through. Uh, the, there is no consensus really in the computer forecast models that I'll show you in just a second. So here you see where the uh, warnings are basically for the Naples area and the Fort Myers area because it's just going to get there first. And then we have this wide area here of uh, tropical storm watches, meaning uh, winds 40 miles per hour or higher are possible that include well inland almost through the Orlando area. So all of metropolitan Tampa, including Polk County, including Pasco County, points north and northeast, all under a tropical storm watch just means be ready for this to get upgraded depending on what happens to the storm uh, tomorrow. So you'll, you'll see either you'll stay under a watch given a possibility of tropical storm force winds or you'll go under a warning saying somewhere in that area the winds are, uh, are going to be over 40 miles per hour. At least that's the expectation. And then we have the storm surge forecast. Now, this is an initial forecast here and from the Fort Myers area, just south of Fort Myers, Bonita Beach, on up to around the Cedar Key area, up to four feet of storm surge somewhere in that area. Because this is paralleling the coast and to the right of wherever the track is, where we get that uh, flow like this, pushing the water against the coast, depending on where it arcs to the right, uh, just to the right of that for a, a good ways, we're going to get the peak storm surge. So does that mean that all this area is going to see water up to four feet above normal high tide? No, it just means that somewhere in there, and because we don't know exactly where that bend is going to be, is it going to be here? South of uh, in the storm surge would be more around the Sarasota area, Longboat Key area. If it were farther south, it would be more in Charlotte Harbor, down even toward Fort Myers. If it went farther north, here maybe it's in Tampa Bay, maybe it's uh, farther up the coast, uh, Horseshoe Beach or somewhere. So it, we, we can't say where, but somewhere in there, the initial forecast is up to four feet above normal high tide. So if you were to go to the beach, stand at the high tide line, the forecast would be about uh, up to four feet above that level somewhere in that area, down from about Bonita Beach on down south and into Florida Bay up to uh, three feet. So now... Uh, if this continues, we're going to get a warning in that area because anything over three feet of a forecast of over three feet will give you a warning. There is a watch uh, in that area for that possibility. In terms of the models, we have uh, a lot of models to the right side of the cone at this point. 
and just well, we're just going to have to see. There's kind of a, a diversified opinion, but the UK Met notice starts way to the south here. So where that center actually develops is going to affect these models, and we're just see tomorrow. But in any case, one other thing to notice is notice the GFS models here are faster, and they actually kind of move on out more than many of the other models. So the Hurricane Center is taking this uh, compromise approach. And then when we get up by the Carolinas, you see all this um, uh, up and down, zigging and zagging, even the h wharf loops here. Uh, the uh, UK Met is much slower, and and the uh, European actually comes up into the Carolinas and turns north in here somewhere. So uh, high, high, high uncertainty on what's going to happen here. The only consensus currently of the models is a slow-moving storm. If it's offshore here, maybe a hurricane. If it stays ashore, probably not. So, you know, obviously not a they're just a strong storm, but a slow-moving storm, flooding potential and everything else uh, that could go with that. So everybody in the Carolinas and Georgia on the southeast coast here, anywhere near the southeast coast, even inland, we could have a Matthew kind of uh, situation here. So uh, we're going to be ready for all kinds of possibilities, not forecasting any one outcome here at this time. And talk about the uncertainty. We look at at this uh, set of, of what are called ensemble models and say, okay, if it's not exactly where the Hurricane Center uh, thinks it is, if it's in different places, a little stronger, a little weaker, then what happens to the forecast? It gives us an idea of, of what the possibilities are. And look at the possibilities, even for the starting point, either down here in the Caribbean or up here over Cuba. So, that makes uh, the things spread out as you go forward in time. So here we are at 7 o'clock tomorrow evening. The idea is we could have Tropical Storm Debbie here off the southwest coast of Florida, either well offshore where it would be over the warm water and strengthening or closer to the coast where it would be come over Florida sooner and probably not be as strong. So then we go up here with 6 a.m. Sunday in the general Tampa Bay area, even some way out here, but the consensus in the general Tampa Bay area, but some still well offshore. And then continuing on to 6 a.m. Monday, and then we get the big variety, some moving quickly, some much more slowly. And then, see, they all get uh, confused because some are, are, are twisting around, some are moving out, but a lot of them are still in the vicinity here of the uh, Carolinas and Georgia, 6 a.m. on a Tuesday. And then you can see some take off like a rocket ship and some linger here on through Wednesday. So we're going to be ready just again in the Carolinas all kind of possibilities. Don't let anybody tell you they can tell you what's going to happen uh, up there because uh, we, we, there's just no way to know at this point. Even look, one lonely one down here actually turns around and comes back all the way down uh, to Tampa. We, we don't think that's going to happen. Low odds, but the point is high uncertainty uh, the first part of next week. So I just want to look at here when this moisture is going to arrive in South Florida. You see it's a large area of thick tropical moisture. Right now land is slowing interaction. Here we are uh, this afternoon. Now let's go forward in time. Tonight it's interacting with Cuba overnight. So in the morning it's still over Cuba. When I say the morning here we're talking about the early morning hours tomorrow. And then finally during the late morning into the early afternoon, it emerges. Uh, at some time late in the day, we expect Tropical Storm Debbie. How soon that happens, not sure. In terms of southwest Florida or southeast Florida and the Florida Keys, notice you have a strong wind here coming in off the ocean. So very gusty winds and tropical downpours and heavy rain forecast from the morning through the day tomorrow. And notice... Uh, then as it moves north, it's going to take a while to clear. And you see this tail down here, right down in here? Well, so it just really depends on how the orientation of all this happens, on whether the tail continues in South Florida. But in any case, the moisture is all moving north. And this is the threat zone that we're going to be talking about uh, for moisture, stronger winds, storm surge, and in the Carolinas, the possibility of even... Uh, uh, stronger storm, just a possibility, not ruling out a hurricane 
here in the Atlantic. Uh, we don't see any indications of a hurricane here in the Gulf, but we've all seen significant intensification. We have very warm water. We have what looks like uh, really conducive upper level uh, winds. So I don't want to absolutely say there is no possibility if it stays offshore and it stays in the Gulf uh, longer. All right, I want everybody along the coast to stay in very close touch with their local forecasts, especially if you live near the water, because we expect things will uh, change tomorrow, and we could see significant changes in the forecast. Sometimes that happens with the system uh, just developing. Of course, we'll be on Fox Weather, and by the way, if you don't know how to watch Fox Weather, uh, here's the, the the code you can the QR code you can scan with your phone or just remember foxweather.tv has all the instructions for Roku and Apple TV and your mobile phone you can watch us right on your mobile phone and of course I'll be on there uh, through the day tomorrow with updates and I'll have updates uh, for you here online as well so uh, have a good evening everybody and uh, stay in close touch with uh, all the information for your area thanks